Leg drive. 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 If you, like me, have ever embarked on that quest to try and improve your bench press, and you look for videos online, tips on how to do that, you've almost definitely come across the term leg drive. But what does leg drive actually mean? I mean, to me, it didn't make much sense. Because how could pushing down with your legs help you to lift a weight that's in your hands while you're lying down on a bench? There's no direct force transfer, is there? I mean, how does that work? So I looked everywhere and I couldn't find any good, clear explanations of how it actually works. I mean, I can see people do it, but it didn't make much sense to me. So today I'm making this video. Now that I figured it out, I'm making this video to show you exactly how it works and what's really going on. Okay, so the first thing to understand is Leg drive's actually pretty intuitive. It's a natural thing that we do. I mean, if you've ever tried to go for a max attempt and your butts come off the bench, that's actually a primitive form of leg drive. The only problem with it is your butt is not on the bench. And according to powerlifting rules, your butt has to be on the bench for it to count. And since so much of gym culture is powerlifting centered, most gym bros wouldn't count that either. But to be fair, it's actually quite a small tweak to get it to powerlifting standard. So you're sort of gaming the rules a little bit so you can still use this butt lifting thing without actually lifting your butt off the bench. And I'll explain that. So if you want to prove to yourself how important legs are when benching, just take them out, see what happens. If you've ever tried a Larson press, it's like this. You grab the bar, unrack it in your normal position. But once you've unracked the bar and got it to a stable position, then take your legs out from underneath you. Extend your legs out, right in front and hover them in the air. This takes out your legs completely and immediately you'll feel that it feels unnatural and it feels much weaker. I mean, initially you might think this is just a stability issue and yeah, to a certain extent it is. So now put your heels down on the floor and just rest them gently. So you wouldn't get pushing in this direction, but you can have that lateral stability. Still, you will find a greatly decreased force output. So there's a couple reasons for that. First off, if you arch at all, then your legs are contributing to maintain that arch. So I mean, what do you think would happen if I had a huge arch, but no support at the bottom? As soon as the weight comes down there, that's gonna collapse. So your legs help support your arch if you have an arch. If you don't arch at all, if you bench with a completely flat back and with relaxed legs, you know what? Most likely you wouldn't feel a huge difference with the heels down Larson press, but if you arch at all, you probably will find a significant difference. So that's actually a prerequisite for benching with leg drive. You need to be arching in the first place. And that's why there's actually such a powerlifting centered technique. If you're in this for purely hypertrophy purposes, if you're a bodybuilder through and through, you probably won't actually need it at all. Because leg drive, believe it or not, takes tension off of your chest at the bottom. As a bodybuilder, you're not looking to reduce tension. You're trying to maximize mechanical tension. You're trying to make the lift as disadvantaged as possible because you're using it as a developmental movement. But as a power lifter, you're taking these developmental movements and you're gaming them a little bit. You're playing the rules to make sure that you can get the most advantage position possible so you can lift the most weight. But remember, even in training, power lifters will train with disadvantage setups so they can build that base strength. And then on top of that, they'll use all these techniques so they can bring out their peak performance. So within powerlifting, most good powerlifters will actually use leg drive to some extent. Now you might see some sort of variation in the sorts of leg drive used or, you know, the degree, but they all use leg drive to some degree or another. You don't ever see powerlifters benching with a Larson press. You always see feet down, right? So, I mean, to give you two examples of um, slightly different techniques, but still leg drive nonetheless, look at lighter weight classes and heavier weight classes. In lighter weight classes, so let's take, for example, the 66 kilo weight class. A good lifter from that class is Panna. He benches with a pretty wide grip. He comes down with a soft touch. He has a very controlled and methodical press, but he uses leg drive. You can see his sternum pop up, his ribs come back as he presses. And now take the other end of the spectrum, Julius Maddox. He benches with a closer grip, very tricep dominant. He's much heavier and he lifts in the 140 plus weight class. He weighs usually around 200, I think. And he uses a closer grip. He uses a sink when he comes down. He sinks the bar quite deep and then you also see that same pop 
as soon as he comes up, he drives with his legs much more explosive and he still propels that bar to lockout. So you can see there are different you know, levels of leg drive you can use and different people will find um, one technique more comfortable than the other and you might fall somewhere along that spectrum. So now I think it's time to explain how leg drive actually works. So this is how you can do it and then I'll show you what's going on. So first off, you want to get your shoulders pinned. This is the most important thing. You don't want your shoulders to move at all during the press. So if you find it helpful, tie a band around the top of the bench. This will help your shoulders to not move around at all. It will stop them from sliding. Um, there's other techniques you can use as well. Some people like to use chalk on the back of their shirt. Some people tend to use, um, if you've ever seen one of those grippy shirts that have like these rubber patternings on the back, um, they can help as well. They'll do a very similar thing to the band on the bench, but whatever it is, try and keep your shoulders pinned. Okay, now you wanna walk your feet back and build an arch. Once you've built this arch, now you put your butt all the way down and touch the bench, okay? Now you want to keep it in contact the whole time. You wanna keep it slightly squeezed actually, because then even if your hips shoot up a little bit, your butt will still be in contact with the bench because it's a little bit malleable. Now that we've got that sorted, the next thing to do is just simply unrack the bar. Once you've unracked the bar, when you bring it down to your chest, sink just a little bit. Okay, as the bar comes down, let your arch collapse very slightly and on the way back up, flex your quads so you push your hips back towards your shoulders. This will actually bunch up your spine, pushing the bar up, increasing your sternal angle. You put it in a bit of a decline position, which is actually a stronger position. And then you can bench very, very quickly to lockout. So what's actually going on here? So like I mentioned, the important thing is that you're increasing your arch dynamically. As you push with your legs, your hips come closer to your shoulders. And when that happens, your spine bunches up. Once your spine bunches up, this propels the weight like a catapult up into the air. And this is in essence what leg drive is. And obviously this is gonna take some time, okay? If you go into the gym right now and try and use it if you've never used it before, you might get the timing slightly wrong. So you can compare it to, you know, a conventional puller trying to pull sumo. Even though sumo is actually a mechanically advantageous lift, the conventional puller might not pull more straight away. They might need a little bit of time to acclimatize to that because there is a technical barrier for entry. And this is the same thing that happens with leg drive. If you leg drive before the weight touches your chest, then you've missed it. If you do it after the weight leaves your chest, you've also missed it. You wanna do it exactly when the weight is on your chest so you can use that momentum to catapult the bar up. This is a lot like leg drive on a standing press actually. You know when you bend your knees and then explode up and then lock out the bar with an overhead press? This is actually a very similar thing. Okay, so this leg drive while lying down. And the reason why the force transfer can work is because your spine is flexible. Your spine will bend. As soon as you bring your shoulders and hips closer together, your spine will bend in the vertical direction. So if you take some time to practice leg drive, get your timing spot on, you will bench more weight. Okay, so this is sort of an investment. So once you've learned this, you can use disadvantage movements like bodybuilding movements to develop your muscles. But when you go for a max out, you can use this legal technique to lift more weight. Okay, I really hope this helps you. I mean, this sort of explanation really opened my eyes personally. It didn't make sense to me before, but now it makes sense to me and hopefully it makes sense to you too. If you did enjoy this video, then please consider leaving a like and a comment, because that really helps me out. And if you don't mind me sharing it from your feed later, then also hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and see you later.